Chapter seven, the size of the earth and the universe. How many atoms make up the earth? We can calculate the volume of the atom since we know its size and then calculate the volume of the earth and divide the second by the first to find the number of atoms. But that would be incorrect because it would ignore most of the insides of the earth, which is mostly empty space as we already saw. A correct way is to calculate the volume of this empty space and ignore the volume of the atom, which is much smaller. Remember, the empty space between atoms is 4,000 times larger than the atom itself. Some people who are more mathematically inclined might suggest that we take both the volume of the atom and the empty space and add them together and use that number in our calculation. That would be right. The answer would be absolutely correct. But consider this. The atom is 4,000 times smaller than the space between atoms. If we ignore its size to simplify the calculation, it's exactly like someone saying, I have $40 in my pocket, when in fact he has $40 in one penny. Ignoring the penny simplifies matters. A penny is 4,000 times less than $40 and can be ignored without affecting the final answer. Similarly, the atom is 4,000 times smaller than the separating space and its size may be ignored for the sake of simplicity without affecting the final answer. I mention this now in such great detail because we will face this situation time and time again when we begin to deal with larger numbers. Although it is possible to make 100% correct calculations, most of the time it's better to make a calculation that is 99% accurate for the sake of simplicity and understanding. Once understanding is reached, anyone can then go back and improve the accuracy of the calculation. So much for that. The empty space between atoms, as already said, has a size of one thousandth of an inch, which we change to miles and get 16 billionths of a mile. It makes a volume of 16 billionths times 16 billionths times 16 billionths equals four trillionth trillionths. The earth is 7,900 miles across. It makes a volume of 7,900 times 7,900 times 7,900 equals one half trillion. Dividing the second volume by the first will give us the number of atoms inside the earth. One half trillion divided by four trillionths trillionths equals 125 billion trillion trillion, a very large number to say the least. Therefore, there are 125 billion trillion trillion atoms inside the earth. Now, someone might be wondering about this matter of dividing volumes and not understanding how it gives us the number of atoms. Let us step aside for a moment and think of a common everyday example. A drop of water dripping out of a faucet is about one fourth inch across. There's a cup shaped like a ball underneath the faucet catching the water, or maybe there's a tennis ball there instead with a small hole in it. A tennis ball is about four inches across, maybe smaller. The water drips until it fills the tennis ball. If you come in right at the end of this little experiment of ours and you see the last drop falling in, and I ask you, how many drops did it take to fill the ball? How will you calculate it? You have to use volumes because the water, once the ball is filled, will have the same volume as the tennis ball. If you divide this volume by the volume of one droplet, that will tell you how many drops it took to fill the container. So here goes. A drop of water is one fourth inch across. It makes a volume of one fourth times one fourth times one fourth equals 0 0.015625. A tennis ball is four inches across. It makes a volume of four by four by four equals 64. 64 divided by 0 0.015625 equals 4,096. Therefore, there are 4,096 drops of water inside the tennis ball. Now, imagine the drop of water coming out of a tiny syringe needle. Let's say this droplet is only 1,000th of an inch across. Of course, in reality, the droplet is bigger, but you know where I'm going with this. 
These droplets coming out of the needle are dripping into a ball as before, a much bigger ball. In fact, surprise, surprise, the ball is exactly 7,900 miles across, the same size as the Earth. How many droplets will it take to fill the Earth ball? Here goes again. The droplet is one thousandth of an inch across, which is 16 billionths of a mile. It makes a volume of 16 billionths by times 16 billionths times 16 billionths equals four trillionth trillionths. The earth ball is 7,900 miles across. It makes a volume of 7,900 times 7,900 times 7,900 equals one half trillion. One half trillion divided by four trillionths trillionths equals 125 billion trillion trillion. That's how many droplets are inside the earth ball. The tiny droplet represents the bubble of empty space surrounding a single atom. At the center of this bubble or droplet is the atom itself, 4,000 times smaller than the droplet in size. How many atoms are inside the earth ball? Same number as droplets because there's one atom at the center of each. Hence, we conclude again that the total number of atoms inside the Earth is 125 billion trillion trillion. How many stars are in the universe? Sorry, man. The Earth is not an empty hollow ball like you're saying. It's a big rock with water on top. Your thoughts are nice, but those thoughts are not science. To understand how atoms make up our Earth, it's convenient to assume that at the beginning, the Earth was a hollow ball. This ball is then filled with atoms. It is these same atoms that form the rock and water on top, as you put it, as well as the atmosphere. If we take into account the magnetic separation that naturally separates the atoms, as well as the size of the Earth, the number of these atoms can be approximated at 125 billion trillion trillion as shown in the calculations in Black Root Science 5. Are you taking the average size of an atom? As you know, depending on the atomic number, the amount of protons, therefore electrons, increases. Hydrogen has one electron orbiting the nucleus. In the case of iron, or Fe, there are 26 electrons orbiting the nucleus. In theory, the first shell orbit can only support two electrons. The next shell can support eight. Therefore, depending on the atom, you will have space between the first shell and the nucleus, and then space between the first cell and the second, and then the second and the third, and so on. So depending on the atomic number, the size of an atom can change. Also, the volume of Earth would be considered spherical, not cubed, and therefore governed by the equation pi times radius squared instead of s cubed, or length times width times height, radius being half the number you mentioned. The volume of the atom is tricky, but would probably measure more accurately if you use the volume of a sphere. From what I remember, the electron orbits are very irregular. I think the forces and movements of some atomic particles now fall under the theory of quantum mechanics. Whoops, my bad, I give the area of a circle. The volume of a sphere is actually four thirds times pi times radius cubed. Yes, I'm using an average estimate for the atom size. The carbon atom is given as six billionths of an inch and carbon has only six electrons. It's one of the smaller ones. The size of the electron is very small compared to the gap separating electron orbital circuits or shells. As you rightly say, the atom sizes will vary greatly. A 100 electron atom, fermium, will be much bigger than either carbon or hydrogen. So the sizes will range from less than one billionth of an inch to over a thousandth of an inch due to these orbital gaps. The proportion of these gaps is analogous to the distance between planets in our solar system. The Earth is only 7,900 miles across. Compare that with the gap between Earth and Mars, which is about 60 million miles. The same proportion separates the electron orbital shells. So you were right about the increasing size of atoms. I took a median or midway point between a billionth for the smaller atoms and a thousandth of an inch for the larger ones and came up with about a millionth of an inch.
On the second question of the volume of the earth and the atom, I did use the spherical volume formula, which you are right, is four thirds pi radius squared. But R or radius can be written in terms of diameter. Clearly, as you know, diameter is twice radius or R equals one half the diameter. So the formula can be written as four thirds pi times one half the diameter cubed or one six pi the diameter cubed. The factor one six pi is common to all spheres, large and small. When dividing the volume of one sphere, earth, by that of another, atom, the common factor cancels out. So I ignored it from the start. The effect is the same as using cubic volumes. I'm sure you'll agree that ignoring common factors from the start greatly simplifies the calculation. As to the irregularities of electron orbits and their designation to the realm of quantum mechanics, there you raise a very involved issue, but not at all complicated. It is made complicated by those who do not know or even ignore the true origin of things. I think you know the race I'm referring to. I will address this topic in a later Black Root Science. You've mentioned electrons, but why not protons or neutrons? Do protons represent positive energy and electrons negative energy? Do you agree that there are 12 planets in our solar system, like the Sumerian tablets illustrate? What are called protons and neutrons refer to the makeup of the nucleus. The nucleus of an atom is a sun, literally. The sun is primarily a magnetic, electrical, and light body. As with all large bodies in space, it has magnetic poles, a negative and positive pole, or north and south, just like the Earth. The polarities of these poles give rise to what are called protons. So a proton is not a particle or a separate body like an electron, which is literally a planet, but simply an effect of the magnetic poles of the sun, the nucleus. The substances that make up the sun are under the influence of its magnetic field. This influence or interaction gives rise to another effect that science has called the neutron. Both the proton and the neutron are effects of the sun's magnetic field. When they are studied on an electronic scale, these effects give the illusion of actual moving particles. And so modern scientists call them protons and neutrons. On the question of the number of planets, there are many smaller spheres, slightly smaller than Pluto, beyond the boundary of our solar system. They cannot be called planets. Occasionally, as the thousands of years pass, some of them enter our solar system and establish temporary orbits long enough to be regarded as planets. They were recorded as such by some ancient astronomers, especially the astronomers of Sumer. After some millennia in these orbits, they are always captured by the larger planets like Jupiter and Saturn, to become their moons. So how can you age the earth or the universe by calculation? How old is it and how much time is it left for its completion? The estimated total number of star systems in the universe is 125 billion trillion trillion, as I described in one of the posts on astronomy or physics. The gods send 144,000 settlers from the first earth every 7,000 years to inhabit these star systems, most of which have earth-like planets. This is how our earth was first inhabited 78 trillion years ago by 144,000 of our ancestors who came from another star system. When the entire universe is inhabited by black people, then the universe will have attained its purpose and will come to an end and be replaced by a new one. This has been going on without beginning and will never end. The full age of the universe at that time will be about 875 trillion, trillion, trillion years.